Hi, this is a lecture on quadrilaterals. Recall that quadrilateral is a geometrical figure which is formed when four non-collinear points are joined to form a closed figure. We will start off with the first property that is the angle sum property of a quadrilateral. The angle sum property stated in a short fashion would be the sum of the angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. Let's see how we can prove that. Uh, let's first start off by naming this arbitrary quadrilateral as A, B, C, D. One way to do that would be to join AC and make the AC diagonal. And now we have two uh, triangles. Let's see how we can use the property of these two triangles to prove that the sum of the angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. Now in triangle ABC, the sum of the angles is 360 degrees. So angle CBA, I'll call it angle B itself because there's no ambiguity. So angle B plus angle B A C plus angle B C A is equal to 180 degrees. And also here in triangle A D C, angle D will be angle A D C will be called angle D because there is no ambiguity. And uh, using the fact that the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees, we have angle D plus angle B A C plus angle D C A is equal to 180 degrees. Now if we add these two, note that angle B A C plus angle D A C, angle B A C, that is this angle plus angle D A C is actually angle A itself. And angle B C A plus angle D C A, angle B C A plus angle D C A is actually angle C itself. So therefore on adding these two we get angle B plus angle D plus angle A plus angle C is equal to 180 plus 180 degrees which is 360 degrees and hence we have proved that the sum of the angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. <coughs> now let's look at the uh, classification of all the types of quadrilateral. The first one here is called a trapezium. It has two parallel sides. That is to indicate that these two are parallel. This is what you call a parallelogram. Parallelogram. So these two sides are parallel and also equal and these two sides are parallel as well as equal. This is a rectangle where this is a 90 degree rectangle. This is what you would call a rhombus where all the sides are equal and uh, they are uh, these, these two are parallel and these two are parallel. This is a rhombus. This is a square where this is 90 degree and all the angles are for 90 degree and all the sides are equal and they are also uh, uh, these two are parallel and these two are parallel. This is a square and this is a quadrilateral called the kite where these two sides are equal and these two sides are equal. This is called a kite. Please take note that a rectangle, a rhombus and a square are actually just parallelograms with special properties. Notice that uh, all four, uh, all, all, all three of them actually satisfy all the conditions of a parallelogram that is having uh, two sets of uh, parallel sides and opposite sides being equal. A rectangle is just a parallelogram with this angle equal to 90 degrees. Right? And uh, a rhombus is simply a parallelogram where all the sides are simply equal. And a square 
is a parallelogram with all the sides equal and also the angle 90 degrees. So these three are simply special cases of a parallelogram. Now let's start looking at the properties of parallelograms. The first theorem states a diagonal of a parallelogram divides it into two congruent triangles. Let's first draw a parallelogram and we'll see how we can prove this theorem. So if we consider this parallelogram, let's name it A, B, C, D. And say we join this uh, diagonal, a diagonal of a parallelogram divides into a con two congruent triangles. So we have to basically prove that uh, these two are congruent triangles. Now let's let let's see how we can do that. So we know that this side is parallel to this side. We know that AD is parallel to BC. AD is parallel to BC, and so therefore. Considering parallel lines AD and BC and AC as the transversal, we know that this angle is equal to this angle. That is, angle DAC, DAC is equal to angle ACD. These are our alternate angles. Right. And so, therefore, we can use uh, this fact and Along with that, if we consider parallel lines DC and AD and AC as the DC is parallel to AB and AC as the transversal, we have angle DCA is equal to angle CAD. Again, these are alternate angles. So angle D, sorry, I it should be BCA. Angle BCA is equal to angle BCA is equal to CAB. Angle CAB. And so therefore, we can prove by ASA congruence rule that triangle BCA is congruent to B sorry, triangle B A C and two. So we have proved that a diagonal of a parallelogram divided into congruent triangles. Uh, you can use the similar logic to prove that this diagonal will also be the similar to that. In a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal. The proof of this theorem is rather simple. Uh, we can simply use this result, that is, a diagonal divides the parallelogram into two congruent triangles, and uh, we can build on on this theorem itself to prove this theorem. Let's 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 see how we can do that. So we'll start off by making a parallelogram as usual with the diagonal. So we have A, B, C, D. And we'll borrow the result that we took here. So, and triangle DCA, triangle DCA is congruent to triangle BAC, triangle BAC. So, by corresponding parts of a congruent of congruent triangles, we have BC is equal to AB. So, we have proved that DC is equal to AB, and now in this we have AD AB is equal to CD AD is equal to CD so we have proved this theorem now theorem 3 states if each pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral is equal then it is a parallelogram this the proof of this theorem uh, which is actually the converse of this theorem is also rather simple and you are invited to do this as an exercise. Next up, theorem number 4 is if in a, in a parallelogram opposite angles are equal. This theorem is also pretty easy to prove and uh, we can take hints from doing this that is uh, drawing the diagonal and considering uh, 
congruent triangles. In fact, you can see it right here. We have uh, angle DCA. Let's just write it down. Angle DCA is equal to angle CAB. We also have angle DAC is equal to sorry. Uh, let me just write it here. Angle ACB is equal to angle DAC. And on adding these two, we will actually get angle C is equal to angle A. You see how, that, uh, how that's working? Angle DCA, angle DCA plus angle ACB. ACB is actually angle C itself. And similarly for A. So the proof of this theorem is very trivial and uh, oh, I actually showed you for one side and the same can be done using the other diagonals. If in a quadrilateral each pair of opposite angles is equal, then it's a parallelogram. Again, uh, this is the converse of this theorem. Theorem number six, the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Let's see how we can prove this. We'll start with a parallelogram. And we'll draw both the diagonals and name the vertices. And we know that AB is equal to DC and AD is equal to DC. And if this point is O, we have to prove AO is equal to OC as well as DO is equal to OB. Right? And let, let, let's see how we can do this. Considering AB parallel to DC, AB is parallel to DC, and transversal being DB, AB parallel to DC and transversal DB, we have by alternate angles, angle BDC, angle BDC is equal to angle DBA angle DBC uh, sorry BDC BDC is equal to angle DBA also if we consider AB parallel to BC and transversal to be AC we have transversal AC and so therefore by alternate angle we have angle ACD is equal to angle CAB. So this angle is equal to this angle and this angle is equal to this angle. So therefore by ASA that is angle side angle angle side angle we have triangle O B A is congruent to triangle O B C triangle O B A is congruent to triangle O D C this implies by C P C T as even introduced earlier D O DO is equal to OB. DO is equal to OB. Also, OA, OA is equal to OC. We have proved whatever we needed to be proved, and so and so. So that's how you prove theorem number six. Theorem number seven: If the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then it's a parallelogram which is basically the converse of theorem number six. The proof is pretty elementary and uh, you're invited to try it out as an exercise. Next up, we would be looking at uh, some more theorems regarding uh, parallelograms as well as a very important theorem called the midpoint theorem. Uh, but we will stop here for this lecture. Uh, the rest of it will be covered in the next one. Thank you so much.